welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes and I'm so happy you're with us today. Oh, my dear friends, the older I have grown and the longer I've been doing these Seek Reality podcasts, the more convinced I have become that the happiest people in the world by far are the ones who have found some fairly consuming things that they can enjoy doing for for other people. Seriously, if I were giving one piece of advice to the young, that's the piece of advice I would give. It's not the people who make the most money who are are the happiest, not not even close. In fact, I think they're often the most miserable, nor the people who write the best books. It's the people who have found a way to make other people the happiest. And we have had so many of those wonderful people on this program. They've been busting their buttons happy to be doing the work that they were doing. What, What got me thinking about this is our guest today. T.J. Woodward, who is with us for the fourth time. I first found T.J. a few years ago when I read his terrific book. It's called Conscious Being, Awakening to Your True Nature. And I saw it as fundamentally being liberating Jesus, but based in Eastern religious teachings. It was the core teachings of Jesus. But for people who have been too traumatized by fear-based fear-based Christianity to really even listen to Jesus. And most importantly, TJ's teachings work the way the teachings of Jesus work to raise your consciousness vibration. And TJ's next book was Conscious Recovery, a fresh perspective on addiction. And that's based in his deeply compassionate and love-based work with people who have substance abuse issues. His third book was Conscious Creation, Five Steps to Embracing the Life of Your Dreams. I've been out to San Francisco and actually met T.J. Woodward. He is a very intense guy, but he's a joyous guy, someone who believes intensely in the work that he has been doing for people. And the joy that he finds in doing all this human-centered work is just wonderful to watch. T.J. is a deeply compassionate man, especially when it comes to people who have had bad breaks in the world. I don't even know what he's up to now, but I know that whatever he's doing, he's finding joy in helping other people. When I asked him for his topic, he said at once, staying calm in an ever-changing world. And I thought, well, that's going to do it for me. So welcome, T.J. I'm so glad to have you back with us today. Oh my gosh, Roberta, thank you so much. And yes, I remember when we got to meet in person, so much joy. And yeah, I think intensity is is true because I do have an intense passion for sharing my own um, transformation. And there were people in my life that helped me become more aware of a different possibility for life than the way I was living. And it has become my life's purpose to share that with others. And there, I couldn't agree with you more that true happiness, true happiness, deep happiness always involves in some way serving others. And that has been true for me. And I have witnessed that in countless lives of people who find a purpose, live on purpose, and you know, then life becomes a life of infinite possibilities, happiness and joy. And isn't that what we all want? I, I think it's what we want. I mean, I I have tried living for myself, and it really was very dead ended. I, I could tell you stories. It it really, it it does make you miserable in the end. The trouble is that no matter how high you climb on that ladder, you always find other people who have found other taller ladders, and they get to the top of their ladder, and it's always taller than your ladder. So, there's that's always a, a fool's game. It's, it's there's no way to ever get anywhere when, when, when you're doing that when you're when you're living for yourself people wrap it up in, in themselves make a very small package and and I think that you know I, I guess I feel very lucky that I discovered that very early in life before I get where it got very far into it but but tell me what you're up to now because I never got to found, find that out 
Well, yeah. And when you were when you were talking, I was thinking of a Lily Tomlin quote. She said, the problem with winning the rat race is you're still a rat. And I just I just some, somehow that came up for me as you were this image of climbing the ladder and there's always someone one rung up and, you know, that rat race and, and it, you know, it can be fun for a while. That was me earlier in my life, like trying to achieve, but then, you know, it all collapsed for me and the greatest <laughs> gift happened. <laughs> you're, you're still a rat. I love that. I've got to remember that one. Yes. And, I, you know, I saw that on the Internet. We don't know if she really said it, but it certainly is a wonderful and very true quote for me, at least. <laughs> so that what am I? Really true. Yeah. So what am I up to? Wow. I, you know, my my primary focus right now is conscious recovery. And, you know, as you said, really offering someone a more love centered approach to healing um, the deeper root causes of addiction and you know, we're in a, we're, our topic today is staying calm in the midst of an ever changing world. And one thing that we're seeing in the world um, is more mental health issues, um, more addiction. And my mission today is to help people reconnect with their true nature so that they can actually heal um, a different approach to addiction, a different approach to recovery, not one that's viewing the person with an addiction as broken, but one of being curious about the wholeness that exists within each and every one of us. That's my passion. I mostly go into treatment programs and train clinicians on my model. Um, I'm about to go to San Diego for two days and do that. And nothing brings me more joy than that, because I know that that has a ripple effect. Um, and it gets to, um, have a profound, I hope, impact on people I'm never even going to meet. And there's something about that that brings me a, an immense amount of joy. What 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 is happening with, um, for example, fentanyl? I, I, I mean, I don't know anybody who's an addict or even has ever been one. So it's outside my my experience. But I know that you've had a lot of experience helping people who are addicts. And, and I, I just read an article this morning, which just horrified me apparently it fentanyl is the leading cause of death now among people who are really at what should be their peak young age um tell me about it i mean you must see it What's yeah with that? well you know it's interesting because we could talk about fentanyl um but really my work is what is creating this desire for someone to escape from their reality and i love the name of your show is Seek Reality, and you're talking about, I think, a deeper reality than a lot of our young people today. And we can focus on young people because that's, you know, the question you're presenting about fentanyl and overdoses and deaths. What How do you is pronounce it? About... it? What's that? I can't even pronounce the word. I just read it. <laughs> I, I don't even know how to pronounce the word. You just pronounced it correctly. I just read it. Oh, I think you pronounced it perfectly. Yeah. Okay. I, and I don't even I don't know correctly. either. <laughs> but but one of the things that's really foundational for me, and this is where um I think conscious being, liberating Jesus, that teaching, how it applies to addiction is, you know, addiction's not the issue. Uh, the issue is a, a more of an ex existential question of who am I? And I think young people today have pressures that I can't even fathom. You know, I remember being in junior high and high school and those were very difficult years. And I can't imagine adding to that social media, adding to that the experience oh, we just yes. had with COVID, adding to that a lot of different factors around polarization in our country. So I, you know, I have so much compassion for young people. Um, and I think the issue is so much deeper, you know, so often when we talk about addiction, we end up talking about a particular drug or we talk about, you know, the cartel that's bringing the drugs and those are all symptoms. And I'm really curious about what's really at the root of this that is oh, causing true. people wanting to escape what they call reality. So true. What is the problem do you think? Well, I think you and I um, are aware of the teachings of who we really are is an infinite spiritual being. And yes. we come into the world with an innate knowing of that, even if our brains can't comprehend it, right? A very young person, we come in with that and then we get programmed to believe 
in the ideas of scarcity or lack or otherness, you know, that's at the root of all conflict is the idea of the other. And we're seeing that um, we're being told in our media that we're a polarized country. I don't believe that. I, I think that we've been conditioned to have polarized thinking. And that's a really different um, idea, if you will, than we are polarized. Because when I sit down and talk with anyone, we all want the same thing. And that's love and connection. And yes. Then when exactly. we get into the opinions that we have, then we see each other as different instead of looking for that innate similarity or that oneness within each and every one of us. Exactly true. Well, do, do you do you think that it's the government is trying to polarize us, us for our, its own purposes? Well, I mean, I think that's possible. I think more than that, or more more likely, let's put it this way: more likely, it's it's people's consciousness, level of consciousness, right? And, you know, you've got the media, of course, uh, they want ratings. And for some reason, otherness, divisiveness, um, that seems to pull people. And it's the ego, you know, you and I know it's the human ego. And there, there is something about that that is extremely seductive. I remember when I was addicted to the media, I, you know, couldn't wait for the next dramatic story. Uh, and I, I came to understand through a lot of my own work that that was really my own unhealed trauma. Um, simply said, if I believe I'm broken, I will see that everywhere in the world and I will unconsciously desire it. I'll desire to see brokenness in the world. And then we turn on the news and there it is, you know, the, 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 the oh. news stories, which are not new at all. It's the same old story. Right. So it's, it's, there's a kind of projection going on. Absolutely. We're seeing in the world what we feel in ourselves. Yeah, and collectively, the healing that is being asked of us now is a healing. It's a, a return to our own wholeness, our own inner perfection, and unplugging from what we once called reality and plugging into a deeper reality is the important first step for that. Right. Oh my goodness. All right. I didn't actually, I didn't name this program. My spirit guide did. I, I, I thought I was going to call it something, you know, about the afterlife, you know, seek the afterlife or, or, or live in the afterlife or, or what is the afterlife or something. And I opened my mouth to say that and, and out of it came to seek reality. And I thought, ah, where did that come from? Because mm. I didn't even know my spirit got at the time. But that's that's where the title came from. And it's been very handy because it means we can talk about literally anything uh, on, on the program. But but yeah, wow. But so so basically the whole problem that people are having with escaping into drug issues really is is re a re just a reflection of how broken people feel. That's right. And how much we have separated, and that's not exactly accurate, how much we believe we've separated from our true nature. And there's a lot of different words for that. We could say our God essence, our true nature. Buddhists would call it our Buddha nature. Um, we might call it our essential beingness. We come into the world as that, as a spiritual being. And that's why I love um, seek reality because that is the one and that's the fundamental reality. And most of us are not taught that or we get that taught out of us, right? You know, very few people I know on the first day of kindergarten had the teacher stand up in front of the room and say, you are a whole and perfect spiritual being and you're an infinite being right. and capable of creating whatever you want to create in, in reality is what you make it. That's not what I got at least. <laughs> no, for sure. <laughs> right. So we wow. start to believe lies about ourselves and we believe that's reality. And so I think the addiction, whether it's an addiction to drama, addiction to being right, addiction to drugs, addiction to shopping, that is really um, some kind of search for wholeness. If I am out of touch with my true nature, I seek the world. I look to the world to try to help me feel again or feel whole again. And all of that is great, except for it just doesn't work. Right, it just doesn't really bring satisfaction. 
And and um, some, something interesting was in the news. I won't name the politician, but a, a politician's child was 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 in the news for for cutting. And apparently, uh, some some young girls do you know, cut themselves because it gives them some sort of of an endorphin high, which struck me as very strange. It sort of makes you go, huh? But apparently, that's something that happens that you can become addicted to yeah and we see we see that a lot and it's it's young women young men um young humans um doing that and um when i've worked with people who are experiencing that um it is usually that helps them in a strange way it brings them some kind of relief from some anxiety or some challenge or this they're wound very tightly and when they do that it brings relief and that's something that on the surface i would say i don't relate to and then if i lean into it i can say well i've sought all sorts of absurd things to bring relief from this feeling of my own disconnection so i in, in a way even though i've never done that or imagined that i can understand it from a spiritual level i mean all of the, we are very complex beings <laughs> And and um, we're 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 complex, and we're um, we had someone on very recently who talked about endorphins, which are a kind of hormone, and we are we are basically sort of governed by hormones and 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 chemicals, which affect our our brains in strange ways, and and we um, all of all of these things. Uh, um, although we are spiritual beings, they they do affect us, and and if we are not in spiritual balance, um, they can act like drugs and, and and affect us and make us do and act and want and feel. Apparently, if we get too out of balance spiritually, we can feel the need for these chemicals in order to feel. Yes, I think that's right. And when we are, like I said, when we're disconnected from the truth of who and what we are, we seek that from the world. And then we find experiences that do bring us the sense of a rush, you know, and yes, it's endorphins. There's so many levels, right? It's physical, intellectual, emotional, and spiritual. And we have these different aspects of self. And when we get that, that rush, if you will, that's why, you know, I also, you know, I could say on the surface, I don't relate to someone who gambles, but I think the reason that that is so seductive for people is they get that rush and they put their money in and there's a, a sense of, am I going to win this one? Is this the big one, right? People are obsessed with playing the lottery, you know, and, and the, the idea is if I, I'm going to put in my $10 and if I win the 10 million, my life will be forever different. And there is a chemical rush from that. I, I, people are very complex indeed. And, and so, so when you are, when you start working with people who have an addiction how do you, what are some of the things that you do that help them? Well, we start with a recognition that the addiction isn't the problem. And the reason I say that first is so many of the addiction models focus on that, focus on talking about the addiction, focus on the detox from the substance, which by the way, of course, is an important first step. If someone is in the midst of an active addiction, the deeper work isn't um, necessarily going to actually be effective. But once we have that physical detox, it's not really about the substance. It's about something much deeper. Uh, and in conscious recovery, I identify the root causes of addiction as unresolved trauma, spiritual disconnection, and toxic shame. So another way to say that is an unresolved past. Um, trauma is a word that we're hearing a lot now. And, you know, people might think of it as coming back from a war zone or having a parent die or something that is obviously traumatic. There are so many other layers to that. And, you know, going back to that kindergarten story, unless you had that teacher that told you you are whole and perfect, that can be a traumatic experience for a spiritual being. And Roberta, you know, you and I, we're talking about this from a spiritual point of view, not from just physical yes. reality. And so Absolutely. 
it's traumatic if I'm not seen as a whole and infinite spiritual being. And that's something that is happening. That's every human that I know has had that to a degree, you know, propagated by society. Yeah, I, I, I think be, we think of, of ourselves as fundamental spiritual beings having this brief human experience, which was planned, um, which is intended to um, deepen and strengthen our, us as spiritual beings. And we, we want to get out of it, um, strengthening, deepening uh, spiritual growth, essentially. And so uh, uh, how do we do that? But first, of course, if, if we've had spiritual trauma, um, we're, we're trying to heal that spiritual trauma. So that's what you're, what, what you're about, really, in the work that you do. Um, so, yeah. so, so you're working with people to do that, essentially. Yeah, because I think you named the deepest root of it, right? It's the spiritual healing. And for, for anyone who's listening, obviously, if they're someone who's listened to your show a lot, they know exactly what we mean by that. But some people might not quite know what we mean. So it really is that wholeness, that, that place of who and what we truly are. True reality is that we're infinite beings, that we came into the world as love itself, right? That's that frequency. And regardless of which master teacher you follow, I mean, Jesus uh, simply said, you know, we are here to love, we are here to be love, right? And um, that is the fundamental message. And that's not what most of us get taught. So really, spiritual healing is about returning to that. It's not about, see, a lot of religion teaches us we're trying to get somewhere. We follow some rules, we follow some guidelines, we have beliefs. And really, spirituality isn't about a belief. A belief is centered in the mind. Spirituality is an experience. And so, the the religion or you know a lot of different systems teach you're trying to get somewhere but what i'm saying is we're trying to return to something that's already inherently who we are yes. very very different process and guess what process of remembering exactly. recovering recovering yes. and remembering and you and i both know it's actually much easier so i spent you know the first 20 years of my adult life struggling to try to become something and then at one point, when everything kind of fell apart when I was 40, what was presented to me is, oh, I can call off the search and rest in who and what I've always been. That's a very different yes. way of being in the world. And that, yes, I can't, well, I can't believe that you were ever other than I sort of <laughs> know you now. But you went through, you went through a lot of grief, I guess, in at this first part of your life. Yeah, and and it's interesting, you know. It, it you talked about the brief incarnation on planet Earth, and I remember being a very young child, and when I was taught about some traditional um, Christian concepts like heaven and hell, just didn't make sense to me. But what yeah. did make sense to me, and this was just a very young mind. I was thinking we came here and this is a, a dense planet. Now, I probably didn't say that when I was seven, a dense planet, but I was very, very confused about um, war, about violence, about the way I heard men talking about women, the way I heard white people talking about black people. There were so many things that were um, very counter to my true nature. And I remember at a very young age thinking, it's not really heaven and hell. It's we came here to work through this. Now, that's a that's a really profound thought for a seven-year-old or a six-year-old, but maybe it's not. It is. It is. <laughs> maybe it's not. Maybe that's just um, an innate knowing that we all have. I, I think that there's a lot. It's a lot. Yes, there is a lot of innate knowing in tiny children that... that um, uh, having having been one, having raised children, and then having helped to raise grandchildren, I think they are uh, they know a lot. And if you haven't had your children yet, just be aware you're looking at somebody who has lived many lifetimes. When you look at that tiny newborn baby, and they are a lot. They're 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 not just a, a blob of of cells. <laughs> they 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 know a lot. <laughs> And just respect them for the for the complex beings that they already are when you first hold them in your arms. It's 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 quite surprising that they're 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 old beings when they're first born. 
That's right. And that, and that really this, this spiritual journey in some ways and many ways is about returning to that innocence, that knowing that yes. I have that awareness yes. and, and may, exactly. you know, many people believe that we choose to come here to work out particular things. Some would say karmically, but what that really means is maybe it's possible that we've chosen the parents for our transformation. We've chosen the life experiences and regardless of whether we cho chose it or we came here or why we came here, there's so many people are looking for the why. And I don't think that's the powerful question. I think it's what do we want to do with this now? Who have we come here to be? How can I be more of service to transformation? That's much more important than trying to figure out why we came to this very interesting planet at this very interesting time. <laughs> yes. But the, the, the service actually, and, and that, that, as I say, when I think of you, that's what I think of. Because um, you, you're always, I think, in the midst of being of service. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you started a church and you, you've, you're always doing things for people mm -hmm. much more than most of the people, certainly that we've had on this program, although everybody is in the middle of doing something for other people, but you're always doing a bunch of things. It oh, seems. Thank you. Well, you know, I, I remember I was facilitating a workshop once years ago and somehow organically this process came up where I invited people, we did a meditation and I invited people to reflect on the most powerfully transformational moment of their lives and just see what came up. What was the positive moment in your life that provided the greatest transformation? And as people reflected on that, we wrote, each of us wrote those down and we shared that story. And it occurred to me that our purpose is to bring that experience to others. And for me, I had a couple of really profound experiences where the the belief in my brokenness the belief in separation the idea of not enough or better than all these ideas that i was taught were stripped away and i i touched reality and for me that has become my life's mission to assist others in knowing that and that's the foundation of conscious recovery it's not how do i break the cycle of this addictive tendency it's how do I, what are, what are the ways that I can return to who and what I truly am? And when I really connect with that and understand that and experience that, that becomes my, my purpose on planet earth. So, so thank you for acknowledging that. And sometimes I, I, I have to, you know, check myself if you will and say, okay, I'm here to be this. I don't, you know, sometimes there's, there's an intensity and you use that word to like, I want to help as many people as possible. So I, I do hold that, you know, wear that like a loose garment because um, that in itself can become an addiction. I'm here to, you know, save the world. Yes. That's Why not really what we're here to do. That's true. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because we can't help everyone. Um, uh, uh, because it is frustrating to, to life goes fast. You know, you, you, you just had Saturday and all of a sudden you notice it's Thursday again. <laughs> I mean, a week has gone by and what, what, how much have you accomplished in that time? Not very much. And, and, you know, you were just six and my goodness, now it's, you're 13 and suddenly you're 25 and, 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 and oh my goodness, now you're 40 and all of a sudden it turns out you're 58 and, <laughs> and here I am 70 and your life is going fast. And how many people have you really helped? Not many. Mm. And um, then, then you suddenly realize your whole life has gone by. And what have you really changed in the world? Not a lot. And you, you suddenly say to yourself, wait a minute. What was I supposed to do with my life? Mm. What have I accomplished? Mm. And, you know, I have had to have a good hard talk with myself and say, okay, I've done all these things, but how many people have I really helped? What have I really accomplished mm. with my life? Not a lot. And I, I've had to have conversations with my, with my guide. And fortunately, he's willing to have those conversations. Um, what, what was I supposed to do mm. with my life?
Well, there it turns out there were some things and I can, I'm being granted the time to do those things. Mm. But I, I think it's, I think it's important for young people to have those conversations while they're young with their guides yeah. and not try, you know, you're not going to be able to change the world, but you can change a little part of it. Mm. And if each person will have those conversations and will change a little part. Who was it? Was Ronald Reagan was, I think it was Ronald Reagan who said, there is no limit to the good you can do if you don't care who gets the credit. Mm. And that's very true. Yeah, and, right. I, and I, I love so much of what you just said, because I know that when I was in my 20s, I thought I needed to change the world in order to be happy. That that seems to be what, what we do in our 20s. And we see that right now in our culture. Um, a lot of young people wanting to change the world, which of course is, um, it's, it's a gift in so many ways, because this generation... Um, is coming in saying we need to do better. And I love that. And for my, myself, what, what happened um, is I realized that the most profound way I can change the world is to serve the world. And that's really different. So um, my friend Michael Beckwith says, we're not here to change the world. We're here to serve the new paradigm. And what is the new paradigm? The new paradigm, Roberta, is what you and I talk about, and that's consciousness. And so in that way, yes, we we change a small portion of the world, but that has a, a profound ripple effect or really an instantaneous um, shift on planet Earth. So um, I can say, you know, I can't, there's a paradox here because as soon as I unplug from needing the world to change and look at how I can shift in consciousness, that in effect, then then that shifts and it actually does have a profound effect on planet Earth. And that's how the world has changed. It's changed through example and consciousness. We go back to the the, the master teachers. They didn't come trying to like change the world. They taught us how to change ourselves and elevate our consciousness and then that, in effect, does change the world. That's the greatest paradox. <laughs> yes. Well, in 2009, I gave my life to God. I figured I don't know how to do it. So uh, whatever God wants me to do, I'll do. And God can do it. And um, that was when I started to write my books and do the things that I'm doing. And um basically God is using my life the way God has decided God wants to use my life. And I think God has done a much better job of it than I could have done. <laughs> and, um, but God is doing it in God's name, not in mine. And um, I will not be known or remembered for having done anything, which is just fine with me. Um, I think that's the key thing. Um, and as, um, as I think, I think it was, I'm really not sure who said that now, but it really doesn't matter who gets the credit as long as we can move the needle just a tiny bit. That's right. And it's and interesting because it doesn't even matter who gets credited for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yes, aren't you profound, my dear? Yes. Um, I saw uh, a, a, a meme on social media that, that said, I'm pretty sure I never said that, the Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true that's true because we, we we are a collective consciousness anyway so we all said it yes that, that's that's really true that's true very profound and true i like to think that that we all together are collectively moving the needle on consciousness we all all together collectively are making a difference as we um, all basically are deciding to say no to the things that we know uh, we need to say no to. And we're all saying yes to love. We're saying yes to kindness. And we're all moving the needle <clears throat> just a little bit. And I need another drink of water at this point. Yeah, I mean, it really is true that the world is is transforming. and And that's why I think at least at some point in our evolution, I invite people to unplug from from the media because that 
is only one version of reality. There's so much love oh. happening right now on planet Earth. We could create a news channel that is dedicated to all the beautiful things happening on planet Earth. And there's no way we could fit it into. There's no way we could tell all the different stories of love. And yet we've been programmed to believe that news is all the horrific things happening on planet Earth. I'm not saying they're not happening. What I'm saying is that is the the <laughs> by the vast minority of what's happening on planet Earth. What the loving things that are happening on planet Earth are so much greater. And so it really is where we put our attention. Like 20 years ago, I never watched that watch television of any kind, go to the movies, listen to the radio, never, more than 20 years now. Don't do it. Yeah. And I, mean, I, I figure if there's a war or a calamity, someone will let me know. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And, and there are people who say to me, well, are you just, you know, burying your head and not paying attention to what's happening in the world? And my answer on one level is absolutely I am because I don't want to buy into <laughs> yes. that. But on a, a much greater or, or a, a different way of looking at it, no, I, I don't want to continue to feed that. You know, there was this person shall remain nameless, but it's probably obvious who I'm talking about. There's There was a political figure and is a political political figure who is a master at getting people to be against him. And every time he does that, he gets more power, right? Because people are so against him that that creates more of that. And we know what we focus on grows, right? I, I recently did a talk called Spirituality is an Algorithm. And all that means is an algorithm on social media is whatever you click on, they give you more of. So if I click on hate, I'm going to experience more of it. If I click on love, I'm going to experience more of that. I went through a practice of cleaning up my newsfeed on social media. I didn't unfriend anyone. I just unfollowed people that were, it didn't matter. You know, it, it's so seductive to think there are sides. You know, this person agrees with me and this person disagrees with me. But anyone who is posting about division, about hate, I just unfollowed them and started following and friending people that were connected with the people that I love. Now my newsfeed is filled with so much joy. It doesn't mean that it's not filled with someone posting that they lost a loved one. It means that in general, the newsfeed that I've created with consciousness is loving. That is how consciousness itself works. So if I focus on division, I will see it everywhere. If I'm divided within, I will see that everywhere. So, you know, we talked, we said we'd talk about how to remain calm in an ever changing world. And it's connecting with, and that's not exactly accurate, but developing or cultivating a relationship with the part of me that is source energy, that is one. And when I really know that, I see that everywhere. Love is who I am. When I know that, I see love all around me instead of hate and division. No, I, I even do you one better. I actually pay someone to be me on, on whatever, Facebook and Twitter Beautiful. and stuff. Beautiful. And she has 55,000 followers. She does a wonderful job, but I, I never even go there. <laughs> they think that she's me. She's wonderful. But um, but, but I, I've never even been there. I, I just don't do it. I, I don't go to Facebook. I don't t Twitter, whatever that is. I don't do any of those things. I, I just to totally have unplugged from everything that is even 20th century. Think of the time I have now. Think, wow. of, the, think of the books I have gotten written. Right. I, it's, it's wonderful. You mean all think those conversations I was having with you on social media wasn't even you? Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but she is so much better than I am at it. It's wonderful. I just love her to pieces. What a you know, gift. She's very sweet. And she, she has learned to mimic me better than I can mimic me. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> really? No, I, I, I don't mimic me very well. And I, have, I don't have any patience either. But no, it, it, it's real. I think, I think you're absolutely, absolutely dead on right about all of this. I, I think that the culture we have created is a very cold, unfriendly, unloving culture. And I think that that we we need to um, do all that we can 
it's wonderful that you have the patience to to engage with it and that and to, that you can deal with it. But uh, but I can't. Um, <laughs> I, I I just can't do it. I'm I'm trying to the best I can to to do this to do what I'm. I mean, I blog. I um, you know do these podcasts. I write write books. We're in the process now of giving Jesus a website as best we can that's based on what he taught and has nothing to do with Christianity because Christianity has nothing to do with what he taught. And, um, and we're, we're trying the best we can to, <laughs> to do the best we can. But you, you come to the point where you say, um, we, we have created basically a culture that is based in evil and we're, we're, not, we're just not going to feed that evil and fight it. We're not going to fight it because to fight it is to, is to feed it. I don't know who you were talking about, but if if there's if there's someone who is, is is has found a way to encourage the evil, I don't want to give that anyone any. I don't want to give that room. I don't want to well, help that. I mean, I think if you look at po politics in general, you know, and I don't know how conscious it is, but that's really what it is because it's it's by its very nature, it's right and wrong and good and bad. And and if we're going to talk about evil, you know, because that word, you know, that has a certain connotation in our culture, I would say it really is separation, right? It's duality. Yes, and, yes, and it's divisive. It divides right. people and that certainly, I mean, love is not, love is not supposed to have no opposite. That's right. Exactly. No, That's the no, teaching. No, no, say that. You say it again. Love is love has no opposite. Period. Right. right. It says that in A Course in Miracles. Love can have no opposite. Right. It. It, it, it. That's the way it is. I mean, um, it, if 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 there is an opposite, then that by itself is 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 immoral. It, it there is no opposite to love, and if we have created an opposite, then already we have put everything out of balance. That's right. So um, what what we're saying, what we're doing then is is immoral and wrong, and and we're I'm I'm doing all that I can to create what's positive and loving, and that's all I can do. Oh my dear, we, you well, and I have to. We, this is a conversation that is going to take many many more of, of these episodes, I think. Well, you know, uh, I'm always a yes to continuing this conversation. And <laughs> I think what you what you just shared is the perhaps the most profound truth, because that really is the journey. It's a journey of really understanding. And I don't mean in the mind, but really understanding at a very deep level that love has no opposite and love is who we are. And so to understand yes. that is to understand reality. And then we start to witness the world through a different lens. And so I appreciate the work that you're doing on planet Earth. And I, you know, you're very humble to say you're not helping, but you are doing a profound um, service to planet Earth with that message alone. Because as more of us say that and live that, and the reason that I can um, be part of helping people heal that is that I lived for so long not understanding that or not believing that or not really getting that at a deep level. And the greatest gift was the moment and the moments that I could experience that and think, oh my gosh, life can be so simple. I feel like I want to stand Amazing. on the tallest from the tallest building and shout this to everyone, which is really what we're doing, but we're doing it in the most loving way, I hope. <laughs> we're trying to be gentle i mean you 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 can't force feed, feed people love you have to offer it and in the gentlest possible way you know it, it's sort of like adopting a kitten you have to just put it in a, in a saucer of cream and that and and pat them when they come to to lick it and that up and that's what you have to do that's right um you 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 and pe people will People will will take it if if you offer it gently, and um, that's all you can do. And what I have found is that um, people will come to you, and um, I mean the genuine Jesus, the genuine teachings of Jesus are nothing but love and kindness. What's what's awful though is that Christianity. Um, serves up Jesus the way it serves up everything else. It tries to force feed Jesus to people and, uh, and in a, in a very uh, violent way. And 
that's not Jesus at all. So uh, our the, the website that we have been asked to, to by Jesus to to uh, give people is all, nothing but the genuine teachings of Jesus, which are are love and and kindness and joy. And uh, that's what we're about to do. Yeah. And we'll see if people will take take Jesus as a kitten takes cream, and we'll see what happens. But anyway, we have come to the point of. Um, We've come to the end of our time, but we will definitely do this again. We have barely scratched the surface of the things we need to talk about, you and I. Yes. Well, thank you. So what do you want people to take away from our conversation today, my dear? Well, the takeaway for me is that what Roberta said is that love has no opposite. I'm I'm leaning into that because sometimes the, the simplest truth is the most powerful. And to really lean into that and say, love has no opposite and love is who you are. Maybe reflect on that. I'm going to. My commitment to myself is to take that into my meditation practice. Love has no opposite and love is who I am. Repeat that and notice what happens. And then from there, see how life begins to change because Life is a great experiment, and the invitation that we're offering is to lean into that and experience that as a truth, as your reality, and watch what happens to what we once called reality. <laughs> That's the greatest gift. Thank you, my darling. Well, everyone, we have come to the end of our time once again. This has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. I'm so happy you could be with us today. Please never forget that you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began, you never will end. And when you fully understand all the implications of that fact, it's going to change everything in your life for the better. Next week, our guests will be Dennis Grega and Michelle Zabo, and they will be with us for the fourth time. Their main website is afterlifedata.com, where they collect as much information as they can about death and the afterlife, and they make it available to the world. Join us next week and learn what's new in the largest collection of afterlife information on the internet. And today we've been talking with TJ Woodward, who has been with us for the fourth time. As you can see, he is a ball of energy. I first found him when I read this terrific book, you should read it, called Conscious Being, Awakening to Your True Nature. And I saw it as basically liberating Jesus, but based in Eastern religious teachings. It, it, what's amazing is some people are so fed up with Christianity, they can't even really stomach Jesus anymore. That's tragic to me. But if you're there, conscious being is going to be able to, to take you where Jesus could have taken you if you had not given up on Christianity. TJ's next book is Conscious Recovery, A Fresh Perspective on Addiction. And that's what he's doing with his life now. He's helping addicts. His third book was Conscious Creation, Five Steps to Embracing the Life of Your Dreams. And frankly, T.J. Woodward is one of those people that if you know him, to know him is to love him. He's, he's a creative person who just loves helping people. And, and for, for everybody who's young, to find the cause that you can truly feel passionate about that involves doing beautiful things for other people, as T.J. has done, that's what you want to do with your life. It truly makes living worthwhile. And now, of course, it's time to once again mention that Seek Reality Online is your one-stop resource for all things death and the afterlife. What you want to do as soon as you can, as soon as you possibly can, is teach yourself that you never are going to die. Seekreality.com. You can begin today to learn that your reality really is eternal. As you know, my nonfiction books are Liberating Jesus, My Thomas, The Fun of Dying, The Fun of Staying in Touch, The Fun of Growing Forever, The Fun of Living Together, and The Fun of Loving Jesus, Embracing the Christianity that Jesus Taught, which is going to be eventually the, the, the companion book to teachingbyjesus.com. You can order all these books through bookstores or on amazon.com or barnesandnoble.com. And the adult books, all, all of them except The Fun of Meeting Jesus are also available as audiobooks. If you want to talk about anything at all with me, you can always contact me through the green contact block on robertagrimes.com. I answer every email provided you've given me your correct email address. 
Past episodes of Seek Reality are always available where, wherever podcasts are found. And many people just tell me they listen each week through the Seek Reality app. You can find wherever free apps are found. And meanwhile, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Please enjoy and make the most of this coming week in our one reality, always knowing that you are a powerful, eternal being. And you, most of all, in this whole universe, you are infinitely loved. You've been listening to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Join us every week as we explore what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about the one reality we all share. Knowing the truth changes everything.